Theodore Roosevelt became the 26th President of the United States on the 14th of September 1901 as the former President William McKinley had been shot a week earlier. Therefore, at the age of 42, he became the youngest person ever to hold the office of President. He was born in New York City in 1858, just three years before the Civil War began. As a child of six, he witnessed the funeral of Abraham Lincoln going through the city from the second floor of his house. He had poor health as a child, suffered from asthma quite a lot, nearly died on a number of occasions. With the help of his father, however, Theodore Sr., he helped to build up his body and through various exercises at home. He also studied from home, was taught from home, but later went to Harvard College where he studied law. And while there, he wrote a famous book entitled The Naval War of 1812, which later became a bestseller. During his mid-twenties, he lived as a cowboy in North Dakota following the death, tragic death of his wife and mother on the same day in 1884. Roosevelt married Alice Hathaway Lee in 1880, but unfortunately she died four years later giving birth to a daughter. Two years later, in 1886, he married Edith Kermit Carroll. They had five children. In relation to politics, he became involved with the Republican Party in New York City and was elected to the New York Assembly in 1883, where he quickly emerged as a powerful reformer fighting corruption of various kinds. He became police commissioner and modernized the service in the city. He also spent six years as a reforming commissioner of the U.S. Civil Service and in 1897 he was appointed Assistant Secretary of the Navy. He resigned after a year, however, to lead the Rough Riders in the war against Spain and Cuba. He had developed some brilliant horse-riding skills in North Dakota as a rancher in his mid-twenties after his wife's death. After the war, Roosevelt emerged as a, as a war hero and was elected Governor of New York City, and the following year William McKinley selected him as his running mate in the presidential election of 1900. And so six months into McKinley's second term, he was shot in September 1901, and Theodore Roosevelt became, the pre became president without being elected to the office. Despite this, he is regarded as one of America's greatest presidents. He is one of the four presidents whose monument forms part of the massive sculpture on Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. This monument represents the birth, growth, development and preservation of the nation, as represented by George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln and Theodore Roosevelt. In regard to conservation, Roosevelt used his authority to establish 150 national forests, 51 federal bird reserves, 18 national monuments. In total, about 230 million acres of federal land were reserved for public use, which is an area much bigger than the state of Texas, the second largest state. He made extensive use of executive orders to reserve federal land. In fact, he made 1,081 executive orders as opposed to the combined total of 1,262 for the previous 25 presidents. Eventually, conservatives such as Charles Fulton passed an amendment in Congress which limited the president's conservation powers. Theodore Roosevelt generated huge publicity for himself when he heroically led the Rough Riders up San Juan Hill in 1898. Despite the fact that the Spanish were outnumbered 16 to 1, Roosevelt emerged from the war as a national hero and was elected governor of New York the following year. As governor of New York, with a huge reforming program, he found himself in conflict with many leading Republicans in the city. This conflict, combined with his war hero status, pushed the president, William McKinley, towards accepting him as his running mate for the second term in 1900. As an earlier video shows, McKinley was shot in September 1901 and Roosevelt, at the age of 42, replaced him, making him the youngest person ever to become president of the U.S. Roosevelt was very conscious of the power of the media. The publicity and glory he gained from the battle in Cuba got him basically the job of governor and then vice president. And now, as president, he allocated a special room in the White House for the media, where he gave photo opportunities and daily updates on policy developments. He believed he could use the presidency as a kind of bully pulpit, by which he meant that he would outline his big reform programs, persuade the public of his advantages, and through the media pressurize Congress to support his ideas and legislation. In this way, he changed the nature of the presidency, made it more dynamic, more persuasive, and central to American politics. In 1902, for instance, 140,000 coal miners went on strike and threatened the nation's energy supply. At first, Roosevelt threatened the miners by sending that he would send in federal troops. However, he then changed tactics and threatened the coal mine owners with the 
federal takeover of the mines, claiming that a shortage of energy created a national emergency that could not be tolerated. Eventually, he forced both sides to compromise with shorter hours and higher wages for the workers. Roosevelt also fought big business monopolies and took 44 lawsuits against major companies such as Standard Oil, forcing them to break into smaller companies. He developed a name as a, as a trust buster for such actions. He used the Hepburn Act of 1906 to regulate rates for railway companies. Conservatives such as Nelson Aldridge in the Senate fought against such progressive ideas. Eventually, a compromise was reached whereby companies were allowed to appeal to the courts if they considered the rates to be unreasonable. Theodore Roosevelt was a progressive who aimed to fight the most, the worst elements of big business and, as he said himself, give a square deal to every man. Roosevelt also tackled corruption in government offices. Corrupt officials in the Indian office, for instance, were persecuted for cheating Native Americans out of land parcels. In 1902, the president sacked Binger Herman at the land office, and 146 lawsuits were brought against officials in the Oregon land bribery ring. Senator John Mitchell was in prison for six months for bribery. Roosevelt himself was accused of corruption in regard to the construction of the Pamon Canal, but he denied the charges in Congress in 1906, and they were never really they were never proven. In 1906, also Upturn Sinclair wrote a very influential book called The Jungle. People were shocked when they read this book at the way in which the meat industry was conducted. Various health regulations were violated in order to maximise profits. Roosevelt responded to this situation by promoting the Meat Inspection Act of 1906, which banned misleading labels and har harmful preservatives and required frequent inspection of the meat plants to ensure uh, food safety standards were maintained. Roosevelt also promoted the Pure Food and Drug Act of 1906, which banned false labels on drugs and food products. In relation to foreign affairs, perhaps Roosevelt's greatest achievement was the construction of the Pamina Canal. Statesmen from Britain and the US talked about this for decades. The clayton Bulver Treaty of 1850 envisaged a canal going through Nicaragua, in which both nations would be equal partners, and the canal would be available to all nations. However, that project never went ahead, and in 1901, the, the Hay Pons Futter Treaty nullified the former agreement and allowed the US to have total control of the canal going through Pamina. The US Senate also insisted on America's right to defend the canal and allocated the equivalent of $12 billion for its construction. Pamina was a province of Colombia at that time, and the L Colombian Senate, however, rejected the US proposal. This in turn led to a rebellion in Pamina and the province declared its independence from Colombia with the support of the US Navy. Roosevelt negotiated a deal with the new Panamanian government and the canal greatly reduced the travel distance of goods going from the east and west coast of America and vice versa. It was also agreed that the canal would be available to shipping of all nations. The canal was constructed between 1909 and 1913 and the U.S. agreed to relinquish control of it during the Jimmy Carter administration over 70 years later. Roosevelt was also concerned about Japanese anger over US, the U.S. taking over Hawaii a few years earlier. In 1904-05, Japan and Russia were at war over rival claims in regard to Manchuria and Korea and Russia basically wanted a, a, a nice free port also in the region. In February 1904, Japan attacked the Russian fleet in Port Arthur in China. About 150 to 170,000 people lost their lives in the conflict. Japan defeated the Russians in the first modern Asian victory over a European power. Both sides agreed to Roosevelt being involved in the peace settlement. The Treaty of Portsmouth took place the state of Maine in the United States. Roosevelt won the Nobel Prize for his part in the negotiations. Following the Japanese victory, both the U.S. and European powers were wary of Japan's future ambitions. Also, the U.S. foreign policy planners were believed that Germany could attempt to take over the Philippines. Japan were angered at the U.S. takeover of Hawaii a few years earlier. And to resolve these various conflicts and tensions, Roosevelt and his Secretary of State agreed the Root Tekahira Agreement of 1908. The agreement consisted of Japanese recognition of the U.S. annexation of Hawaii and the U.S. in return recognized Japan's control over both Manchuria and Korea. They both also agreed an open-door policy in regard to China.
Elsewhere, the United States and Britain came to an agreement in regard to the exact location of the Alaskan-Canadian border. Britain controlled Canadian foreign policy at that time. Now to take a brief look at what became known as the Venezuela Crisis. 1902, Germany, Italy and Britain blocked the ports of Venezuela in demand of repayment of bank loans from that country. Roosevelt became involved and managed to get all three nations to meet at a conference at The Hague. Eventually, agreement was reached on the basis of 30% of custom duty collected at Venezuela ports would be used to pay off the debt. Roosevelt later issued what became known as the Roosevelt Colliery, which which was basically in addition to the Monroe document, document, which insists on America's right to intervene in Latin American affairs in the case of grave wrongdoing in order to discourage European intervention. Theodore Roosevelt won the 1904 election with both Democrats and Republicans accusing each other of corruption. It was obvious that big business had a major influence on both parties. In a second term, Roosevelt continued to promote a progressive agenda at home combined with a strong foreign policy. In 1908, he decided not to seek a third term and instead supported his cabinet secretary, William Howard Taft, to replace him. Taft won the 1908 election and took the party in a more conservative direction, which angered Roosevelt and his supporters. He attempted to regain the Republican nomination in 1912, but failed and then went on to challenge Taft as head of the progressive movement. On October 14, 1912, just about three weeks before the November election, Roosevelt was shot just before making a speech in Wisconsin. He went on to make the speech, showed tremendous courage, people admired his courage, but he split the Republican vote and Woodrow Wilson won the election on 42% of the vote. Theodore Roosevelt went, uh, died on the 6th of January 1919 and is remembered as one of America's greatest presidents.